experience. So why then does it hurt? And it's this fear, tension, and then you get pain syndrome. And all the people birthing and all the um, other therapies that we have, all the holistic space on this syndrome that Grammy Dick Reed recognized back in the 1940s. So in the 21st century then, like I said, it's a common phenomenon now. I want to know where the joy of birth's gone. And reducing this generic fear is a high priority for midwives around the world and including Port Harcourt to tackle. The fear of childbirth has, to, has an effect on the woman's confidence and ability to give birth normally. And what we have to address now, common sense, we'll look at there's a lack of understanding of normal physiology and birth. Poor preparation and lack of support and increasing use of technology has all made a contribution to this generic fear of childbirth. So we have to address this. What are we going to do to reduce this fear? It's an extremely important goal during labour and birth. We have to meet the physical, and not just the physical, the emotional needs of women. These have to be addressed. And we know from lots of research and evidence, continuity of care and carer are very, are very beneficial. Being supported reduces the levels of fear, and this then will promote normal birth. I'm a May Gaskin. Those who are not terrified are more likely to secrete in abundance the hormones that make labour and birth easier and less painful. So active birth and support. The woman needs to feel safe and well supported during labour. Remember we are mammals, we want a nice calming environment and we need the support. We also need the environment, and this is key, to freedom of movement. Lots of women adopt different positions during labour as a coping mechanism to get them through and progress during the first and then the second stage of labour. Sometimes we use props available to encourage women to try different positions. And I have a, brought a prop for you today, the birth ball, that we use quite a lot back in the UK. And they will do different positions on the ball and I will demonstrate how a woman can sway and just go from one contraction to another. Now movement is a vital component of labour and also the companionship and support. So I'm just going to show you how safe and it's a simple little measure that can be so beneficial to women in early labour. balls to align a neutral curve. 
stuff for having bad backs. And we're a nation, we're a world of bad backs now, because what are we doing most of the time? We're on our laptops. What is happening to your back? Remember? So if anybody has a bad back, and we said talking about labour, this is a very good way to ease that. A lot of women have pubic pain, it eases that as well. And you saw when a woman has a pain coming, she will feel it and then it will grow in intensity. She will rock her baby into her pelvis. Nicely. And she will rock the other way. As we have done for centuries. But she has to come from the fall. And she will rock, and when it's getting very intense, she will rock backwards, forwards. And she's opening her pelvic outlet to make it easier for the baby to descend through the birth canal and for her to give birth. And yet, it is such a simple method. assuming an upright position and birth and back in the UK the NHS Centre of Reviews and Dissemination has looked at the evidence widely. Now the most important thing you have to remember is gravity. It's common sense. And what happens to women when you put them flat on their backs? What happens to the big aorta artery? You are blocking the blood supply to her and her baby. So that is a disadvantage as well, putting the women on the back, and you get aorto cable compression. You also get better alignment of the baby to come through the birth canal, and it will promote good contractions, and it increases the pelvic outlet. There is good evidence now to support this. And a clinical trial has even demonstrated that there is no harmful effects associated with walking around during labor, and women should be encouraged to do this. So a range of positions that women can adopt in the first stage of labour. Women like to change positions. I know when I had my first baby, I walked on the spot. I liked to march. That eased it. And I swayed. It was as if I was doing a slow dance with my baby. I'll say we've got some nice West African music that is nice and calming to help our babies come into the world. They will recognise this music when, because we've gone with our babies in the room. It's called Taptonomy. It's very big in France. From 24 weeks pregnancy, we talk to our babies. And I've just done some recent research when we've been involved in the fathers. It's very important to involve the fathers. That when the father put his hand on the growing room, when babies are awake, they will move to the hand. And they have shown this in scans. It's very interesting. Now a lot of women will get a lot of pain in their back. Remember their lower back? And it's usually associated with back-to-back -back position, an occipital posterior position. And leaning forward and moving and rocking will help turn that baby to a position to be birth born normally. Let's see if you can sit in a stranger toilet. Now, I'll probably make you laugh here because when I was in labour, I was one of those women that just wanted to go to the toilet all the time. So instead of sitting on a chair, I sat on the toilet, facing the system with a pillow on the top of the system. And nobody could move me because I was comfortable. Very interesting. You know, and my husband likes to tell us stories, how embarrassing. That when I got up, I don't know why, too much information, he said that I had a red rim on my bottom, like a baby on the bottom. Um, I said, well, I don't think everybody needs to know that. Women adopt the four positions, and we do Pilates, angry cat, tabletop. It helps them getting that baby descended through the birth canal. And women are so much happier and more comfortable being mobile 
during the first stage of labour. And as I said, rocking helps. And you can use bean bags because you can still cut that between your contractions because that's nature's way of reserving some energy for the next contraction or tightening that the woman will actually get. And this is how women should be labouring. And then when she's ready to give birth in second stage, also in upright positions, kneeling or squatting. Now, good Cochrane's reviews have demonstrated the benefits, so the evidence is there. And what they found is that women have a shorter second stage of labour, there is less need for instrumental births, and there is fewer episiotomies, and there is estimated blood as well. And the use of the, sometimes women prefer to give birth on their side, the lateral position, and that has been shown to protect the perineum. But women will adopt the most comfortable position for herself. She will know. I have been to lots of home births and I have observed, just observed women, and they naturally do this without me having to prompt them. So a range of positions for birth for the second stage. Squatting is advantageous, think about it, to help deliver your baby. Now the pelvic outlet, when you squat, increases one centimetre greater in the transverse diameter and two centimetres in the anterior posterior diameter. And that actually increases the outlet by 28% compared to when women are in the supine back position. And I just want to demonstrate sideways, just, I always get my students to feel their pubic bone and their coccyx, and I get them to practice and to show women, and I show them the pelvis, how it increases your pelvis from a, just staying straight to actually squatting, and I'll just show you. And I get my students to do that, and then, wow, everything. It's normal, it's common sense. So, upright positions, semi-recumbent, kneeling, or squatting on a birth board, for some women get tired, so we have a lot of pillows, and they will adopt and will rest on the bed or on the pillow, whichever position is most comfortable for her. But what we need to do, if we're going to remember one of my objectives today, we want to promote normal birth. So it's, but it's important that women receive this information about normal birth practices. Because women often choose to do what is expected of them. And what is expected of them? The most common image you will have of a laboring woman is on the bed. Lying down continues to remain the most common position and we need to be proactive now in demonstrating and encouraging different positions in labour. And back home, we have the National Institute for Health um, Excellence, nice guidelines. It's all the guidelines now by our Royal College of Ops and Gynae, Royal College of Midwives, and the nice guidelines that women should be encouraged and helped to move and adopt whatever position they find most comfortable throughout their labour. Recently, just um, last year, the results of the birthplace study in England was published. And I just wanted to put this picture up because this is what I was taught 30 years ago. Look at the midwife and look at the woman. The joy of birth. This is what we want there. And really, when we look at the evidence, for low-risk women, the incidence of adverse perineal outcomes is very low. 1.3 events per thousand. So learning the cues, this is Mary Steen with a woman when she was a student midwife, 22 years old, and I just had my first baby at 21 myself. This is a calm environment, and there, this will be 1986, this picture was taken. I didn't know it was being taken. The father took the picture, and I'm learning the cues to be a midwife. I am being with woman. I'm not doing to the woman. I am being with woman. But look at this woman. I'm just there, Karina. It was a dark environment. She delivered a 
upright position, nice and calmly, the baby's awake. Look at how the baby is looking at his mother. The bonding is starting there. And we need to remember that, that you will promote bonding. Remember, John Bogus theory, the attachment theory, that we have to get bonding and attachment right, because then that young man They've been trying develops to good relationships throughout his life with other people. So, remember, we gave birth at home. Let's not forget that. So we have to make the birth environment as home-like as possible. So she feels calm and safe. So when she comes in, like Lego was, really, it should be a birthing suite where she feels safe and secure. But like I said, in the 20th century, we had this shift from home to hospital and the increasing medicalization of childbirth has influenced how birth has viewed and been experienced. When I was talking to the medical director, there was going to be a new birthing unit developed very shortly at the teaching hospital. And we could make this, the unit, more home-like. And we had the opportunity to do this. The four C's, calm, caring, compassionate, and confident. This is my mentor, she has died now. And she taught me a lot of things, but she taught me one thing. And if you don't remember anything from this lecture, remember this. You are as good as anyone, but better than no one. And with this philosophy, you will become a calm, caring, compassionate, confident midwife. And this book is supporting women to give birth at home that I've recently written because we didn't have a book if we had an emergency that I need to do this that we could actually transfer into the consultant leg unit. There wasn't a, there wasn't a problem. And I'll just give you an example of the last chapter. Women like stories. We learn it's narrative research. We learn by that. And you can see here um, eight home births that myself and another colleague have att attended. And we have a range of home births, but we dealt with them. And the, one very interesting one was a Down syndrome baby that was born at home. And there was, oh, you need to go into hospital, hospital. And the mother said, no, I want to keep my baby at home. Baby was fine. The pediatrician can check baby tomorrow. And she was in her own home. And she that helped her to bond with her baby. I have one on route um, in ambulances. Um, but we have the skills and training to do this. So we always need positive stories because as Ina May Gaskin says, the best way I know to counter the effects of frightening stories is to read and, and hear empowering ones. I want to quote this. This, I think, sums up my presentation today when I want to promote normal birth practices. This is what we have to remember. All pregnant women deserve the best possible care and advice found on the best available evidence of effectiveness applied with understanding, empathy, and a philosophy of respect. We need to respect the process of normal pregnancy and birth. As you can see here, a woman using the birth ball, a partner a little bit worried, he needs a bit of preparation, she should get there. Three words that Grandpa Dick Reed said, three very important words that I want you to remember. Fear eliminates fear. And you have your, I'll play on words here, you have your own faith who is going to make it happen for women here in Port Harcourt. You have Dr. Faith Diogo. <laughs> A lovely midwife, and it was so good that I suggest we would publish this in the students' e news. Because we didn't have anything for students, so I said to the students' e news so students could start publishing. Because I want them there to gain confidence, so then when they qualify, they are going to come back to me and do masters and further postgraduate work. 
So she wrote this poem, and it's interesting because there's variations in practice, but it's going to be woman-driven that want to adopt different positions and be controlled and well-informed about their own verse. But sometimes, even though our intentions are good, we have to look at it through the eyes of the woman. So this, she wrote this poem, that one minute while. I was doing so nicely when swaying at home. For I knew it was time to pick up the phone. Come on in, lovely, we can assess. I stalled for a moment, then answered them yes. In through those doors, and the corridors cold. You're doing very nicely. Five centimetres, I'm told. Pop along now to the delivery suite, and through those doors in your midwife to me. What are you having, love? A son or a daughter? We didn't find out I'm really need water. The pool room is full, where I can sort out your pain. She offered me pepperdine again and again. Pop on the bed, dear. You'll be comfortable there. But the pain was too much, too much to bear. Have an epidural. That takes away the pain. I could have kissed that midwife again and again. What a lovely midwife to help me this way. The pain has all gone, but now I'm unable to swear. But thank you, lovely midwife. And the CTG side, that's the monitor for the baby. She watches it closely with eyes open wide. She says, I need the doctor. Just popping out. What's wrong with my baby? I need to shout. We need you to push. Your baby's very tired. But I'm stuck on this bed. And I'm and a machine, I'm wired. Thank goodness the doctor appears onto the stage, here to justify his generous wage. But gives but saves us all from an untimely demise. He must have been God in another disguise. My baby is extracted, not birthed at all. The life-saving process now seemed quite banal. But what about me being robbed of my skills? My plan was for normal. No drama, no thrills. That lovely midwife who helped with the pain. I'd like not to thank you again and again. Your lack of trust in me and this rite of passage might have saved me from this grim night of savage. To the student midwives who, hear, who might hear of my plight, please remember to keep us women upright. Lying on the bed, fighting against Earth's gravity, hindering the journey through the pelvic cavity. Us women need support, belief and security to save us from an experience of barbarity. Use your kindness to move away that bed, then the signs of normality will never be misread. <laughs> Professor James Walker is an imminent obstetrician back at St James's in Leeds. He was one of my supervisors to do my PhD. He encouraged and motivated, motivated me to do my first randomised control trial back in 92. 93 midwives then in the UK did do randomised control trials, but he supported me. He said, you have the ability, and he motivated me. He said, we are a maternity care team. But he said, Mary, and he's recently published in October 2009, you don't reduce cesarean section rates with policies and guidelines. You do it by changing the people. So I'll go back to Charles Darwin saying the same thing, isn't it? It's not the strongest of the species that survives, nor is it the most intelligent that survives. It's the one that is most adaptable to change. We need to change back. And then, instead of being, remember being with woman, remember she needs an emotional needs met as well, not just to do it to the woman and physical. Remember Mother Teresa, Speak tenderly to them. Let there be kindness in your face, in your eyes, in your smile, in the warmth of your breathing. Always have a cheerful smile, not only in your care, but in your heart as well. Nelson Mandela, in the Black Heroes, what he said, always seems impossible until it's done. We need to listen to women, that's why I put them here, who are happy mum, 